Hey guys, I had several people uh, send me some messages asking about why some locks are bypassable and others are not, and asked me to explain why, and I, I, I hated to just explain it, I thought it'd be better to show it, so it took me a while but to collect some locks, and so let's very quickly review what we're talking about bypassing. This is a pretty old, this is a US lock, this is by a company called Taylor. These are fairly common, you can find them at yard sales and antique places. I don't have a key for this one, but they're very, very easy to pick. But, I think most of you know they're also very easy to bypass using one of these knife tools. And the way we do it, you simply take the knife tool, you shove it in as far as you can on the pin side, compress the pins, and what we're trying to do is push it all the way up there and there's an activator on the top and we're going to simply use it to open the lock. And a lot of these bypassable locks, that's all you have to do. This one I think is a real cheap Chinese one, uh, but it, it also very easy to bypass. So a lot of these locks you can bypass with this tool and I'm gonna, what we're gonna do, I'm gonna machine these open and then I'm gonna try to show you rather than try to describe to you exactly what it is we're doing. And since we know what we have to do, I'll show you how some locks protect themselves. Now I bought this lock, this tricyclic, cost me 3,000 scoots, which is, I don't know, about a dollar and a half. But, oddly, this one is shielded, and this is called a shielded lock, and it doesn't allow you to take advantage of that bypass. So, uh, we may as well learn something from this dollar and a half investment. I'm going to machine this one open, and you'll see why some locks have protected themselves against this bypassing. They're still pretty easy to pick, but they can't be bypassed. So, give me a few minutes, I will machine all three of these open, and then we will examine them a little bit more closely. All right, let's take a look at these things. Let's first take another look at this tailor. Uh, you saw this was easily bypassed, and what I've done on all three of these is I've machined it away just to give us access to the locking pawl, which I've kind of painted them red here with the magic marker so you can see what we're doing. So, when we go in through the keyhole, what we're trying to do is take our knife and snag part of that locking pawl and in this case we're trying to grab somewhere in there and if we can grab it and we can then lever it push it to the left and we can overcome the spring tension and it'll pull the pawl out of the cutout on the shackle and then it will open so let's let's lock it and let's see if we can't do that again in through the keyhole and you'll be able to see the tip of it if I move up here close you'll be able to see the tip locking onto that locking pawl and just beginning to move it and when it unlocks it, the spring is broken in this one when I machine through it, but then, of course, we'll get an open. So, an unshielded lock, this is a perfect example of what it does. It just allows us to get in there and actuate that. We completely bypass the lock altogether. The lock doesn't even come into play. It works the same way on this little jarred. Uh, this one got mangled a little bit worse, but I, I did it on purpose because Again, we have the red colored locking pawl. We're going to come in through the keyhole, and I machined it all the way down to the key, so you could see this is going through what's called the broaching, or the, the, the keyhole. We're going in there, and we're grabbing a hold of it with a knife, and we're simply levering it out of the way. Now this one will probably pop out because I did go deep, because I wanted to show you how it goes down uh, the key slot. So that's how that works. Unshielded padlocks, no magic to them. This one is that tricyclic, and I believed, uh, uh, past tense, that this was a solid brass lock uh, and that it was shielded, but in fact it isn't completely shielded. First of all, a couple of surprising things. The first is, is it's not brass. It's some kind of pot metal with a brass coating. The second thing, we've always talked about how these Chinese locks are cheaply manufactured and they do some, you know, some uh, cost-saving measures, and one of them is they don't put a locking Paul on this side, where they, even though they have a cutout, there's no locking Paul going into them. They only actuate from one side, and that's this side. I've color coded this red, but this is not a completely shielded lock. This is a partially shielded lock. Remember, we talked about the keyhole or the broaching. When they broach these, or when they cut the keyhole, uh, they go all the way through it because it's cheap to do it that way. It's fast to do it that way. But in this Chinese lock, they have just cut, if you look at the tip of the knife, there's a slight rounded edge. And had I not machined that away, when I pushed this knife down the keyhole, it would not allow me quite to get uh, a hold of the locking pawl. 
I could get up on in the spring all I wanted to, but I can't quite get past that part there to get a, a access to that locking pawl. So this is only partially shielded. A true shielded lock would have this completely blocked off. So when they did the broaching, they wouldn't go all the way through. They would leave solid metal right in here. So when we shoved this up there, it would just get stuck and it wouldn't go any further. So that, that would be a true shielded lock. Although this is just as effective, we, can't, we still can't bypass it, but it's not a completely shielded, it's only a partially shielded lock. So anyway, there you go. That's how the, uh, the knife works. That's how we bypass these unshielded padlocks. And um, that's how shielding prevents us from using this bypass. Anyway, everybody, thanks for your time. Thanks for watching. Stay safe and uh, stay legal.